Hi, I'm Charlie Murphy, director of MTCA Musical Theater College Auditions. I hope you enjoy this video clip from our podcast, Mapping the College Audition, where we explore the landscape of the college theater world and try to demystify this daunting audition process. But before we fast forward too much, because I love that we're definitely, we, we hit Les Estrada Jones there, we hit Dogfight, and we're going to even go a little further into On Your Feet. But I'd love to hear a little bit, because I got to be witness to some of it, of like your experience, maybe from like 22 to 26. I don't know what that right range is for you. Because I do think someone, and I think this is often true when we're young, will look at your career and be like, damn, he was successful so early. And then just was successful the whole time. Just look at from show to show, amazing thing. I'd love to talk a little bit about like what was between that success. Cause I definitely saw some of those moments. I got, I was privy lucky enough to see Josh when it's like, I don't know, man, I don't know when the next job's coming. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. I don't know. Correct. You know, in terms of where I'm like, you've already had this great success, but still not necessarily feeling you're at the place where you're rumored to be in She-Hulk yet. You know what I mean? Correct. It's not like, th- what about those stairs in between the first success out of school and the place that we're trying to get to? So after Liz Estrada Jones, uh, I think like like 95% of us, that was our Broadway debut. Mm -hmm. And we were open for 30 nights and we were closed. 30 days and 30 nights. 30 days and 30 nights. We closed right after Christmas. You want to know a funny story? So it's Christmas week and that's a big week for the theater. You know, like that's when you're supposed to kill, right? So they bring us in and the first step was, hey, we want you guys to go into Times Square and market the show. So we were out in Times Square passing out flyers with our faces on them. Okay? <laughs> Be like, oh, is this you? Be like, yeah, I'm in the show that I'm asking you to come see. You know, It's a Broadway show. It's a real Broadway show. It's I promise. real. Okay? It's real. It's right there. Uh, you don't right, Spider-Man. Right there. Sure. So after Liz Estrada... I learned a lot. Oh, so let me tell you that story. So Christmas Eve, they tell us, they're like, hey, these next couple shows are big for us. In a nutshell, if we don't do well, we're going to close. So the way the show was structured was we come down these aisles in, in, in uh, robes, singing like a, ah, we go. We all land on stage, and then it's like, go, 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 fight, fight, fight. And we all take off our togas, robes, to see the crowd. So they had just told us, if we don't do well, we're going to close. Christmas Eve, we get to the stage, fight. They took the 35 people that were in that 1200 seat house mm. and put them into like the center of the house. Mm. <laughs> and at that moment, we all just looked at each other and burst out laughing. <laughs> Had the best show of our lives, dude. Absolutely. We were so, we were, we were just, it was so funny. I will remember it forever. So, Get out be of in that audience. Jones. That, yeah. that is the magic of theater, right? You want to be in that 35 person audience. You, You're like, what that, is happening I, right now? I'm in on a secret. You night, can't see that on TV. Whoever was there that night had the best theatrical experience of their uh-huh. life. Okay? It's truly, true. truly, truly. So we're finished up with Lissy J. Let's be honest. That's what this is for, right? Man. I, I got to be on Broadway. So you do think things are going to line up for you. Mm-hmm. You, th- you think the job is going to come. You think it's just going to be there for you. And right after that, um, I, I, this is a lesson here for, for the young bucks. I had a great relationship with my manager at the time, but it wasn't the right relationship. There were things that I knew didn't feel the way I wanted them to feel. Now, in hindsight, I think it's because I loved Entourage. So every young actor wanted to have Vinny Chase and E, you know? Like you thought Mm -hmm. that that's what your manager should be, your best Uh friend and confidant and manager. Yeah. You sleep with the same women. It's all the You you know? So Mm -hmm. I knew that something wasn't right for me. 
there were times where I just felt like I knew I was being, I needed some, a different type of support than I was getting because she's an amazing manager, but it was, it's like a relationship, dude. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, any relationship, you can be perfect, they can be perfect, but if your potions don't mix, it's not right. And I knew then that I just, I couldn't be in it. And it was terrifying and it was scary. And I, and I knew I was going to hurt her, but I couldn't be in it because it wasn't right for me. So once again, thank goodness for the universe. We ended that relationship and another manager called uh, a week later, called over to Abrams and said, Hey, I'd love to meet with Josh. I heard he's without a manager. My agent called me and said, you're not taking any meetings. We've got you covered. And I was like, okay. A week later, that manager called again and said, I'd love to meet with Josh. And my agent, Paul called me and he said, okay. I have to be honest, this guy's irritating the shit out of me, but he's a really good manager. He caught wind that you were without a manager, so go ahead, take the meeting. And I'm with him to this day. His name is Andrew Tettenbaum. Mm. Andrew, I owe everything to, bro. Everything. Because to go back to your question, we finished Lissy J. He came and saw my little Joe's pub thing. He'd come and watch my little thing here and there. And then I got a couple offers to go do musicals out of town mm -hmm. that were going to be in, in process. They're going to move to Broadway. Mm -hmm. They're going to do all these things. And at the time, I just wanted to work. I was just on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so if they're giving me this job, I should go there. And he was like, no, no, you have to be here. I was like, yeah, but it's work. He's like, yeah, but it's not the work that we want to end up with, right? Mm -hmm. Where are we going here? Where are we going? I said, okay. I was like, but what? I need money. He's like, so go get a job. Just go mm -hmm. get a job that nobody's going to see you at. You know, go work at a restaurant in Queens, man. Just go. Are you too good to work? You know, just because you were on Broadway don't mean you're too good to go have a job. Go get a mm -hmm. job. Okay. So I started, I started to teach spin at the Gold's Gym on 54th and 8th. And one thing led to the next. And he was in my ear, in my ear, keeping me confident. I remember mm -hmm. calling my dad and mom in Times Square, bawling my eyes out, terrified that I was never going to work. And my dad said to me, Papa, when you went to school, doctors go to school for eight years. Lawyers go to school for eight years. He's like, we didn't think you'd become an actor in four years. Mm. Take your time. Mm. We have your back. And I'll forever remember that conversation with my parents because mm. not many people have that. Mm -hmm. that, that feeling of a net. And mm -hmm. my net was my parents. My mm -hmm. net was Andrew. My net was Paul at Abrams. These people that believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. Believed in me to get to a place that I didn't even know existed. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. my realm of this business when I was a kid was Nickelodeon. It was mm -hmm. all that. It was Keenan and Kel. <laughs> and then as I got older... It was the theater. It was Broadway. And as you're in that, then you realize, you're like, oh, man, maybe I can audition for some cool movies and TV shows. And I can mm -hmm. audition for NBC and CBS and studios. And But if it wasn't for Andrew and Erica and Susu and Paul and everybody at Abrams and now my folks at CAA, they believe in you when you don't believe in yourself. And it's kind of wild to feel that. Mm. And when you say like you didn't believe in yourself, I'd love to talk a little bit about like, because I do think from the outside watching you, you were always somebody who 
was so good at keeping that competitive fire going, mm -hmm. right? So maybe you're getting some help from one of some of these wonderful support systems. Amazing. But what are you doing other than maybe, you know, that spin class to keep you employed, but like, what are you doing? That's keeping that fire. That's keep, if, if you got it at the thespians festivals from miles teller and you get it at NYU from some of your classmates, damn, they're talented. How are you keeping that fire to go? I'm still reaching for this other goal, even when it feels like it's impossibly far away. I don't know. It was <laughs> never, it was never, I'll be honest with you. It I'm just competitive, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's, you think that's in it. You think you're born with that. You just go, I I've always had that. I'm going to go book train wreck. I'm going to go book this next thing. I'm going to go that like, even if you got knocked down, that fire never really dwindles for you. It's kind of that, it's, it's a funny thing. It's like, I've always been pretty one track minded in the sense mm -hmm. that if I'm going to do anything, I want to do it right. So for me, I was seeing other people do it. Mm -hmm. So I knew it was there. Mm -hmm. So that's this magic potion, right? Like that's this, 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 like this thing that you can't explain, but you just kind of keep getting back out there. Mm -hmm. And I, I do owe it to those people that, that were telling me like, no, you're doing it. You're doing okay. Mm -hmm. Not even as an actor. I mean, my mom and my dad, like saying like, Papa, you're doing just fine. You're doing just fine. You're doing everything we could have wanted you to do. Not once in my life have I heard from my mom or dad, maybe you should. So even in those interims, mm -hmm. when I wasn't working, that's when I think the people around you start to feel like they're protecting you maybe. Uh -huh. And they maybe go, you're so cool. talented. You should go do other things. Put uh -huh. that talent uh -huh. towards. So I think it was my parents' naivete, my uh -huh. naivete, and just the idea that you just keep going. You know, like, what else are you going to do? I'll put it that way. I'll put it this way. When I wanted, when I talked about quitting, when I talked about quitting, being like, oh man, I'm done with this. Andrew would be like, cool, man. So what you going to do? I'd be like, oh, well, I, I'm just going to quit. He's like, okay. And then do what? Be like, oh, and then um, just because they don't like me, be like, oh, okay. So now you're that rocked because you didn't get this, that you're just going to uh -huh. stop this thing that you've been in love with your whole life. And uh -huh. you've been trying and working towards your whole life because now your ego is bruised. You just going to quit. Good. I hope everybody quits because we ain't quitting over here, Charlie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, I thank God that we got to a place that we're at because at the time <laughs> I sounded dumb. I'm sure. You know what I'm saying? But it's just that. It's just yeah. that. If you could bottle up that kind of dumb, though, that is, boy, is that a, a, an elixir that people could use. Because, I mean, I, I do think it is the rare person who can just go back on the court. I'm getting back on the court. I'm getting back out there, yeah. you know, and not feel and still stay sensitive to it, not put the defense mechanism up and be like, well, I don't even give a crap because you can't do that. You still have to be an artist who feels things, but then gets back up, gets back up, gets back. I mean, it's a. It's a really beautiful thing that, that you have. It's funny how- I hope you enjoyed this clip. For the longer conversation, please check out more episodes wherever you listen to podcasts. Or if you want to check us out at MTCA for help with your college process, you can check us out at mtcollegeauditions.com. And if you aren't subscribed to us, hit that button below. And on your way, don't be afraid to give us a little thumbs up. <laughs>